Hey everybody, Jason Isbell here. Welcome to Guitar.com Live 2020. I have uh, my coolest guitar, the Red Eye 1959 Les Paul, number 90891. I have it here for you. I'm going to play it some. I'd like, I'd like to tell you guys that, in, in my opinion, they're the greatest sound in the whole world is a child's laughter. And the second to that is uh, uh, Les Paul through a Marshall turned all the way up. And so now we have this Marshall behind me, head and cabinet, 50 watts. Uh, it could be louder. We got the 50 watts because 100 watts, it's loud. The 100 watt is loud. So I've got the 50 watt. Dave Cobb gave me that head and uh, I've got the basket weave Marshall 412 cabinet underneath. And I've got it turned all the way up. Every knob on the sample is turned all the way up. So I'm going to play it for you in a minute. Uh, but first, I want to tell you a little bit about how I came to acquire this guitar. Uh, a couple years ago, around uh, Christmas time, uh, Sharon King, uh, widow of the late great Ed King, guitar player from Leonard Skinner, bass player also from Leonard Skinner, uh, guitar player from Strawberry Alarm Clock, uh, wonderful musician, great guy, uh, owned this guitar for many, many years, bought it in the early 80s and kept it until he passed with the exception of a decade in there where it was stolen. Uh, but Ed recovered it. He got it back. Um, when Ed passed, a few months after he passed, uh, Sharon brought a lot of his guitars into Carter Vintage Guitars in Nashville, Tennessee, where I like to shop. And uh, Christy Carter, um, who owns the place with her husband Walter, she called me to come in and demo some of those guitars, one of them being the Strat that Ed played on Sweet Home Alabama. And I went in, played the Strat, I played a few of the other guitars. Ed had an incredible collection, some of the most beautiful gold tops, uh, I've ever seen from the 50s, and he had uh, a, an old uh, Black Guard Telecaster that was really great. He had a Mary Kay Strat, a white with gold hardware, everything, even the even the truss rod was gold plated on that guitar. But the the prize jewel of his collection was this guy right here, the Red Eye, and it was on a stand there at Carter Vintage Guitars. I think that's the last time it's been on a on a guitar stand because I haven't put it in one myself. But I picked it up and played it and just unplugged before I plugged it in. Um, I was pretty much obsessed with it because it's so resonant and the neck is the perfect size. It's 59, but it's not too big. Um, the guitar, as you can see, is in wonderful condition. It's got a nice amount of flame uh, without just being ridiculous. Um, yeah, and it, it's made me very happy. I got it then and uh, I've had it for a couple years. And um, I couldn't really afford this guitar, so I played a bunch of private parties, uh, weird birthday gigs in the Hamptons and stuff like that. Um, but it was well worth it. It was really worth it, and I consider myself extremely fortunate to have this guitar uh, now. And I play it almost every day. It, it brings me joy. Um, what I did, the, the tuners were still good, um, so I took them off, and I sealed them, and I put them away, and I put on some reproduction tuners, the uh, single ring uh, Cluson tuners, Cluson tuners, uh, and then I switched out the tailpiece uh, for a reproduction tailpiece because I like to top wrap and I didn't want to scratch up the old tailpiece. But other than that, everything is just like it was. Um, it's a pretty amazing machine. I think Ed had the first 11 or 12 frets redone because they changed size right around here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to play this for you a little bit. Uh, first, I'm going to play it through this Marshall, and it's loud. I got turned all the way up because we're going to have some fun today. But here's how this thing sounds. Let's go with the neck pickup first. I'll tell you what I'll do, because when I got this, I called Dave Cobb, and uh, he opened up the RCA studio, and I went over and we used all of his amps, his Supros, and that Marshall, and a couple other Marshalls to try to replicate some Led Zeppelin sounds. Um, and this was the one that we started with, was this one. I'll tell you this first before I keep going. Dave believes that those notes were played by Jimmy Page on the middle position. I don't believe that. That's close, but I think Jimmy had his bridge pickup turned all the way up and his neck pickup turned almost all the way down so he could just switch between the two and uh, do what I'm about to show you here.
I think that's right. Cobb says it was the middle position to start, but I think it's the neck. And I still think it's the neck. And then you also have the old, uh, let's see. Here's what the middle position, Jimmy Page loved the middle position. And I do too. Zeppelin Black Dog, of course. I've got this Chase Bliss Automatone, uh, Automatone, Automatatone, Tomatatone uh, pedal that is a preamp and a fuzz and an overdrive. And I found a spot here that sounds a lot like uh, the Peter Green out of phase uh, on Greeny, the Les Paul that now belongs to Kirk Hammett. You can recreate it with the middle position with this pedal. And I'll do that to show you a little bit of the tone on uh, uh, Peter Green's guitar. Let's see. So if we roll it up real slow. Pretty close approximation of the out of phase. Um, but this guitar, man, you can do ZZ Top with the Marshall. You can do. Um, let's Peter Green, that was uh, Billy Gibbons. Peter Green did uh, Oh Well, which we cover a lot in our live show, but he didn't use, I don't think, the middle position on that. I think that was a bridge position tone. I think it was more like right here. Also, with the out of phase thing uh, that I found on this Chase Bliss, you can imitate like a cocked uh, Clyde McCoy wah pedal, uh, the picture wah they call it, because it's got the picture of Clyde on the bottom. You can imitate that with this pedal, and you can do like the dire straights. If you turn your fuzz on, you can do your money for nothing. <laughs> That's fun. 
It's amazing how many of those uh, classic Les Paul tones use a cocked wah pedal. If you can find the right wah pedal, you can do it. And, and if you don't need a wah pedal for any other reason other than that, you can get it with this Chase Bliss Automaton. But anyway, I'm Jason Isbell. This is my guitar, Le, uh, Les Paul 1959, the Red Eye. And now I'd like to introduce a special guest that I have brought along uh, to my barn, to, to, to a, a rock and roll barn today. Uh, my guitar player, my dear friend Sadler Vaden. I'm going to put on my mask since Sadler's here. Hey, Sadler. What's up, everybody? Pleasure to see you, buddy. Sounds it's been great, a long man. time since we've seen each other. It's been about six guitar. months since I laid eyes on it's this It's been about six man months. Tell me guitar. what you've been doing. Well, uh, I've been playing lots of guitar. Good. Good. So, and we trade videos all the time of us finding new cool things to do on the guitar. And uh, a lot of like, look at this goofy lick I came up with, dude. <laughs> look at this goofy lick I came up with. Look, I learned your goofy lick. <laughs> it's really fun. It's not as much fun as having sound checks together every day and yeah. getting to actually play uh, in front of an audience. But we can, we can do it. We can handle it. We do miss playing live. Um, I just want to say I'm just so glad that this particular guitar went to this particular person. Oh, thank uh, you because uh, you know, it could have been um, procured by someone who would just hang it up in a, you know, in a closet or a glass case. And uh, this guy actually plays the guitar and, and uses it. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a beautiful piece. And I think Ed would want somebody to play it. Yeah, I think just as much probably as he right. did. I think yeah. he probably, he played it, you know, and he loved it. And I mean, we, we definitely take good care of it, but it's supposed to be used. It's not just a piece of art, it's Absolutely. also a tool. And I don't consider myself a guitar collector. I just like to have the best tools I can possibly have. Absolutely. And that's about as good as it gets for the tools of the trade. Um, Sadler, why don't you play some cool riffs? Um, I got some pedals over here. If you want me to push some buttons, play some rock and roll riffs yeah. and then tell me, tell me what you want to hear. That sounds so good. This it's like flying so a jet. <laughs> it's like flying a jet airplane. It really it. is. And this guitar, I mean, as you showed earlier, this thing cleans up so well too. Man, that you know, rocks. And I that think it's so uh, good. You know, 
And, and you, you know probably a lot more about this than I do, but you know, these are, these are real PAF pickups. And I think they were, they were uh, what makes each like 59 so special is that each one's unique. Yeah. You know, that you're not gonna find like- They didn't it, make them the exact same way. Exactly. Sometimes they just wound them until they were full, you know, and then they threw them in a barrel and they grabbed a couple of pickups and they put them in a guitar. And, and we've, we've played a few of them in, you know, Carter's and uh, Emerald City up mm -hmm. in Seattle. And, Chicago uh, Music Exchange. Chicago Music Exchange. And uh, it's like, not every one you've played is, is you know, uh, I've played some that I didn't particularly like the way they sound. Right, right. They're all cool and they all have something good as far as a collector's item goes. But some of them definitely sound better than others, and some of them play better than others. And the, the pickups are, are inconsistent, but they're kind of inconsistently great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like the, we were talking about the Peter Green guitar. You know, his had some, some weirdness going on. A lot of it was because, I guess, he took one of the pickups out, and then when he tried to put it back in, he somehow reversed the polarity, flipped the pickup around, put the cover on the wrong way. But that's what made it special. Some of those, some of those things happened from the factory. There's at least one that I've heard of yes. that that happened from the factory. Yes. And they're cool, you know, but they all have their own personality. This one, I think the neck pickup is overwound about 600 wines. Yes. But it's, the, the magnet is a little bit weaker in the neck than it is in the bridge. So it balances out in a way that makes the middle position really, really powerful. And that's the first thing I check with a with a two PAF humbucker guitar, is that middle position. Yes. I go right there and I look for that like Dicky Betts, like Ramblin' Man tone. Absolutely. And if I can find that tone, I'm like, okay, this guitar I can do something with. And I think the middle position has been used more times than a lot of folks know, mm -hmm. and it is a, a sort of underrated, you know, pickup position. I think in, uh, you know. Um, a lot of guitar players know about the middle position, but mm -hmm. it is um, sometimes overlooked how oh, yeah. important it is to so many great sounds. And I remember the first time I played this guitar here at your house, and I was like, those pickups, you know, yeah. I was like, okay, this, this is a really, really good one. It's really special, yeah. And like you said, they're all, they're all great for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But this one, the, the red eye in particular, just the neck isn't as chunky as some other 59s, right. mm -hmm. it feels really good. It's not too big. And I, I actually like some of the, the 60 neck uh, profile yeah, they too. for some reason for my hand, my hand's pretty big, but, um, but this one feels closer to a 60. Mm -hmm. So it's not as baseball bat. Right, and right. I, I really like that about, about this in particular instrument. And um, it's just amazing. And I, I'm glad I get to uh, lay hands on it and play it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I know some of you are probably wondering about the Name of the guitar in this red spot right here. Some of you know, I'm sure, but um, the the dye that, that Gibson used to dye the outside, this was originally red all the way around. It was like a darker, thick bar of red to make the sunburst color. And the dye that Gibson was using at that time faded in UV light fairly quickly. And they remedied this in 1960, but they got a different color altogether. And some people like it better, some people don't like it. But the 59 color, didn't stay on too well. Uh, and this one was apparently in the window of a music shop uh, for quite a while. And the tag, they had a little, a little square tag that hung off of this pickup selector. And so the UV light didn't penetrate that tag to fade that spot. So that spot will still fade if I have it in UV light too much. It'll too much, out. yeah. Like there were a lot of them in the 70s that still had a ton of red on them. And now almost all of them are just like gold or, or a yellow or like a, like a blonde color. Um, but this one's called the red eye because it's got that spot. Mark Knopfler's 58 has a similar spot. Um, uh, Mike McCready has a 59, that's got one. Uh, but this one's kind of the most pronounced and the one that's the most famous for that particular. Mark's feature. is the red dot. The red dot, yeah. I'm just kidding, I don't <laughs> call it that. I think McCready calls his spot, I think. Spot? Yeah, spot. But then, you know, everything about these, the, the, the wiring, everything like, on this guitar, I mean, everything uh, does something. Mm -hmm. When you turn it a little bit, it changes the sound and, and that neck, neck uh, position with the tone rolled off oh, yeah. really does the...
it sounds good. If you like guitars, you're going <laughs> to love this thing. Uh, <laughs> I think that's a true statement. Yeah. If you dislike guitars, I can't help you. But if you at all enjoy electric guitars, this is a pretty good one. You're going to love hanging out with us, too. Yeah, please join <laughs> us. Join us here in the barn. I got an idea. There's something I want to do. Yes. I'm going to put this one down. I'm going to give you another guitar because there's something that I would like to check out while we're doing sounds and, and making this video here. And that is. Hey, guys, Jason Isbell here again. This is Sadler Vaden. Guitar player, good buddy of mine. We got a couple Fender guitars for you. That's a 1960 Stratocaster, um, all original except the frets, and the switch has been converted from a three way to a five way, like Cincinnati Chili. Um, this guitar here is a 1953 Fender Telecaster. My wife got me this one for Father's Day this past year, and it's all original except the frets as well. Um, so uh, this one's even still got the wonky old. Um, bass cap, which is kind of useless, but it's also fun. Sometimes you can run it through a fuzz, like a gated fuzz, oh, yeah. and make it sound like a Nord lead or something, uh -huh. you know? Um, but for the most part, I think uh, Leo thought it would replace the bass. It doesn't really sound like a bass, but it's close enough to fake. And you know, when they when they sold these guitars in 1953, there wasn't an electric bass. That's right. So there wasn't really anything you could carry around with. Well, I think maybe was it 52, 53 that they did the the uh, first P bass, I think. And then before that, they had Esquires and Telecasters, and they tried to replicate that sound. And they had the bass player's initiative, and they stole all the caps from the uh, Fender factory. So yeah. That they couldn't do that. So they couldn't do it anymore in like 1967. Yeah. <laughs> 67, there was an uprising. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're going to play some for you. Sadler, what do you want to play, man? Yeah, I don't know. Start a groove and I'll groove along. Okay, I'll do something here.
Telecaster, Stratocaster, Sadlercaster. I hope I got enough top end out of this. Do you hear that shit? Check this out, dude. All Check it out. Parts. Here, take this one. I'll take the red eye and we'll okay. do a last jam just to yeah. punk in the street. <laughs> Guitar. You did the Mario lick. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Like Thank you so much. I'm Jason Isbell. This is Sadler Vaden. Uh, you're, you're, you're tuned in, uh, logged on to guitar.com live 2020. This is 2020, but it won't always be. In the meantime, keep rocking. Keep your feet on the floor and keep reaching for a guitar. Thanks. <laughs>